Hi everyone, it's done it with embroidery.com. How is everyone Friday night going? I am sorry, I had to cancel yesterday. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy week. So, um, as you know, last week my mom ended up in the hospital and that lasted all weekend. And then I paid for it all week. So, but I'm feeling much, much better. Hi, Eldamara. Hey, you know what? So my husband plays those video games, I, I don't know, computer games and stuff. And I think he got like a unicorn or a dragon or something. And he's like, what should I name it? I need a really unique name. And so I gave him your name. <laughs> so your name is in one of my husband's games as one of his creatures. Unicorn, Pegasus, Dragon. I'm not exactly sure he needed a unique name, so I gave him yours. I hope you don't mind sharing your name with a creature of some kind. <laughs> Hey, Dorothy, Teresa. I need my glasses again. I can't see. Hey, Carrie, Melissa, Jody. <laughs> hey, Kathy, Monica. I thought it was pretty funny. And then he came up with another creature and he's like, I need another name. And then I used a, <clears throat> a name generator because I didn't, I didn't know any other unique names. So I was out. I was tapped out after after I gave him your name. So I thought it was funny. Hey, Julie. So I haven't done anything all week. This is the first day I've even worked. Um, so I don't have anything done. So I figured we would look at some old blocks and see what... I have in there and see if there's anything. Um, let's go over easy stitch first. So, like I said, I was supposed to have those emails out Monday, Tuesday. Today was the first day I even made it to my office. Um, it was a pretty crappy week. Um, so emails went out today. Um, so you'll, you'll get an email and it will tell you, oh, I guess I should pull up my email so I can show you what it'd look like. Um, let me find it. Where is it? Of course I can't find it. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy week. Okay, now I can't find the email. Anyway, you'll get the email and it will say to um, click on to your, click into your trophy. It'll give you a link. You click in that link. Obviously, you have to be um, signed in, logged into your account. Here, I'll show you what the page looks like. Now, this isn't a public page. This this email is only going out to those. Oh, you got it? Good. You got it? Oh, good. Good, 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 good. So, it's not a public page. Only those that um, clicked in to participate in the challenge are going to get this email. I noticed earlier that somebody had shared it. I had to delete it because again, it's not a public, um, it's not a public page. Um, if any, if, if, if anybody had this, <clears throat> they could just go in and say that they completed without participating, which is wrong. So normally it will come up forget I did that. And you'll just have to come here to the button says, yes, I completed the love to stitch challenge. And then, and then I'll change to completed. So, um, again, this is only going out to the 498, uh, stitchers who participated in the challenge. Once I have my list of everybody that is saying that they completed the challenge, 
Um, then I'll go through and um, do a, uh, a double check on the accountability posts. Um, and then I'm going to give it like a couple weeks, maybe two and a half weeks. <laughs> So everybody can go through and have enough time to be like, and I'll send out probably another email next week and one the following week being like, hey, if you haven't done this, you need to go do this. So we get everybody in there um, that, I know, 498, can you believe that? I can't wait to see how many of you guys actually, you know, did it. Um, I think last year we had like 460 signed up and 290 something who did it. So, um, that's exciting. Uh, yes, all the emails did go out. If you didn't get it, um, DM me and, um, we may have your wrong email address, something like that, and I can resend it. Um, so we can verify it that way. So we'll give it about two, two and a half weeks. Once I have that number and I've been able to go back through and check the accountability of posts and everything, um, uh, at that point, then I will order the needle minders. Um, so I don't, let me show you what they look like. Do I have that up? Yes, here it is. Um, so this is what it's going to look like. Um, so I think it'll be super, super cute. I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about it. I think it'll be awesome. It's just a simple, simple, um, a simple email or a simple needle minder, which is great because simple's okay. Simple's okay. I like it. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with Love to Stitch. Does everybody get it? Understand it? Comprehend? I hope so. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I, I truly apologize that it didn't go out earlier in the week. But you got to pick your battles. <laughs> it kind of sucks, but you got to pick your battles. I know. I think it's so cute, too. Yes, yes, you will. Um, so Mary Jo asks, will you be able to order extra this time with free shipping? Yes. So what will happen in the, in the two to two to three weeks? Um, well, it'll be after that. So in two to, in two and a half weeks, I'll order the needle minders. Normally they take about 10 days to get, but you know, pandemic. I feel like I've got something on my nose. Um, so last time, last time I got them pretty fast. I got them in like 15 18 days. So I was really impressed with that. So they might be back on schedule. I'm not sure. So once we get them in house, um, what'll happen is you'll get another email saying, um, that the, you know, love to stitch 2021 needle minders are in stock. Um, and then you'll get a surprise number. And again, it will have this click here link. And when you click on that, it will, it'll, it'll do one of two things. Um, which, so what it did last time, what it did with the love, with the witchy stitchy is it would take you to that product, the needle minder product. Once you add it to your cart, it would, it could come up and say this product isn't valid, but it's, it only said that because it's a non-public item. If you went to your cart, the needle minder would be in your cart and I'll have to fix that this time. Um, so then it'll add it to your cart and then you can add anything else you want. Um, and then once you go to check out, once you get to the shipping area, it will come up and I'll say qualified free shipping. And so you'll get free shipping on anything in that order. Now, if you just want the needle miter, you can just boom, boom, boom and check out. Um, and it's super easy. All, um, us um orders are free shipping international um do you have to pay their shipping um so there is that but that's how you'll go through and redeem the sale prize and take advantage of the free shipping so that's really nice that's super super nice um okay so let's Let's see what else we want to talk about. Does anybody have a subject that they want to talk about? 
Um, let's see. I'm just going to scroll through my, um, hello, Loretta. Welcome. I'm going to scroll through my, um, blogs and see what comes up. If we want to talk about something. Um, I did just release, um, the, how to use the easy stitch, um, lap stand, um, which is, um, has been great. I've had a lot of people ask about, um, they're like, okay, yeah, I need to go and change my setup. I need to make some adjustments. It's true. It's true. Once you realize all the things that it can do, it's kind of amazing. Um, okay. So we are, so we sold our, the building that we're in and we're moving in June to a temporary warehouse. And then we're going to move again in September to a permanent warehouse. I don't know if they're still going to do, I mean, I would imagine they would still do a uh, local pickup. I wouldn't imagine that they would stop that, but I don't know. Hang on. Oh, good, 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 good. I know. I can't wait to see it in person either. I, I can't wait to see it in, in person either. I think it's, I think it's great. So let's, let's talk about rolling your stitches. We can talk about that real quick. Cause that's fun. Um, who railroads their stitches now? So like by a show of hands, this challenge is so good for me. I've never ever stitched every day until now I've kept stitching. You have, Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh, yay. You know, it's amazing what a little challenge will do for you, right? It it is truly, truly amazing. Okay, so three. How many do we got on? 39. Four. Five. Oh, you do because of me. Yay. Because railroading's amazing. Railroading's amazing. Okay, so let's and we'll just talk about it as it's playing. Um, so this video was originally, um, how to stitch two over two. Um, but then I realized I could make a secondary video. I'm trying on my current project, but they don't look right. Really? You like your threads twisted. There's no problem with that. Absolutely not. You haven't missed a day since February 1st. I do, but not all the time. I find myself doing that too. I will all of a sudden not railroad. I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know why I'm doing it. You haven't missed a day since February either. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so awesome. Ugh, that just makes me so happy. I've stitched every day except two. My nose was swollen so I couldn't wear my glasses. Oh no. Oh no, I saw in our group today that somebody's in labor and they're stitching. <laughs> that makes me laugh. I could see, I could have seen myself doing that, but my kids are big. <laughs> my treads are twisting more when I railroad. They, 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 they will. Yes, yes, they will. Because they, um, so what I'm doing is I'm putting my thread, my needle through my thread. So instead of it keeping, staying twisted, you know, and, and hiding that twist through the stitch, you're now forcing that twist out. So I will every, I don't know, 20 stitches, resituate my needle and pull the, th pull the twist out of my thread. Um, I mean, depending on what kind of project you're working on, you know, you could dangle your thread. If you're working on a smaller project, dangle it till it twists out all the thread. <clears throat> or, um, like I said, you know, pull, push your needle all the way to your fabric and then pull it. So it, it pulls out all those twists, um, which you should be doing anyway, every, you know, 20, 30 stitches, um, because you, want it to be as flat as possible unless you like the twist 
you like the twist, then leave it. You haven't missed a day either. That's amazing. How many stitches apart were, oh, were her contractions? I don't know. I, I think she was, um, it's in our group. How many stitches apart were her contractions? See, she's in labor. How funny is that? That makes me laugh. Um, okay. So that's railroading. Um, okay, let's do friction pens. Um, you dangle yours? Yeah. Depending on the project, the size of the project, you really could just dangle it. I did have somebody come in once and they asked me, you know, what makes your thread twist? And I was like, sorry, I have something on my tongue. I was like, huh, nobody's ever asked me that before. She was like, well, I figured you guys would know more than anybody. And it is because our hands naturally don't go straight. You, when you, when you stitch, when you move, you go in more, especially myself, I go in more of a figure eight movement when I stitch, um, especially when I'm pulling up, I'll do a figure eight movement. And so generically one thread will always get shorter than the other just because of how your hand moves. Um, and so you should be dangling your stitch, your needle and your thread, or like I say, push your needle down and, and smooth out your thread every row or so um, to get that to even up again. Yes, I have to dangle all the time anyway. I think I'm not railroading right. Yeah, just um, simply um, when you bring it up, put your needle right in between the stitches. Um, you know, I do hold my thread as it's going back down in. Um, Let's go back to that video. So I do hold the thread as it goes back down in. Um, so that might be, let's see. Oh, you can't see it because I'm so zoomed in. Yeah, I do hold it, but you can't see it. So it's kind of running over my finger as it goes back in. But just, yeah, slide it between the two threads and then uh, pull it back in. I've never heard of a tent stitch till I joined this group. I've always dangled my thread. The tent stitch is fun um, for doing the for doing skin. Um, I like to shout when I twist. <laughs> shout it out. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I, I back to my needle every once in a while and open the thread lean point, oh, clockwise once in a while too. How much your thread twists will also be more, will also be more the longer your thread is. I drop my needle frequently as I use a hoop. Correct. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I will I'll let it run over my finger finger to try and get those twists out. But then like I said, either dangle or I guess I need to come up with a terminology pushing your needle to the to the fabric and smoothing out your threads. Um okay, so who has used a friction pen? I love friction pens. I don't have one here with me, but that's why I make videos so I can show you anyway, right? <laughs> so, um, if you, I mean, a lot of friction pens are kind of used for basic embroidery, but they are great because if you don't want to grid with, um, with, uh, grid, grid, What's it called? I don't know. That grid stuff or grid with um, floss. You can grid with a friction pen. So as you can see, they are um, heat. They, they remove with heat. So you can draw your picture on your fabric and then just apply a small amount of heat and it'll disappear. 
Um, and it doesn't have to be an iron. It can be any heat. We were at uh, the November Fest here in town and my daughter had done this big old Christmas tree and she literally put probably, I don't know, $50, $60 worth of um, buttons on it. And she gets it done and she's like, crap, I don't have an iron. Well, we had a space heater um, and she just held it up to the space heater and it disappeared. It was great. I used it in, um, oh, it's put away. I used it in a piece I did years ago. It was Mirabilia's chairs and I had the chandelier from Crystal Symphony. And then I had her four chairs and it was round robin. So I was sending this out. But I wanted to make sure my other stitchers had where I wanted to place it. And I used the highlighter um, to show them where I wanted the chair to be positioned. Um, and you can, it does have an eraser on it. Well, the one that has a lid has an eraser on it. But again, they can be just erased with blow dryer, space heater, iron. Um, I've heard, I've never tried it. I've heard that if you want the ink back, you can put it in a freezer. I've also heard that um, ladies that have done quilts and stuff and then entered them in a fair and then the next morning at the fair, they get marked down as having marks on it. It's because the room that they were held in was cold. And so then the marks came back. I've heard that. I've never tried the whole freezer thing. Um, I did have a customer who, I don't know, her son or somebody wrote a check um, with the pen and they left it in the car and the uh, check was blank. So don't do that. So there's the highlight, there's the, the pens and they come in a bunch of different colors, obviously. And then there's the highlighters. So you could, I, this hurts my soul to say this, but theoretically, I would never do this, but theoretically you could mark up your original pattern with the highlighter and then iron it and the marks to go away. Just don't do that. Make a copy of it. But you could do that if you needed to. I used to live in Wyoming. I made name tags for friends and used the friction pen for a straight line to embroider the names on. <gasps> One winter, a friend came uh, into came into the group and his marks were on her name tag. Oh, from the cold. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. I've never seen it. I've never done it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So it either it's like it's like okay, if you leave it in the car, specifically if you have it and you leave your project in your car, and your car gets hot, your tracing is all gone. So don't leave your project in the car. And again, the opposite can be true. If you if you you know, enter a project in the fair and it gets cold, then your marks could show. <laughs> but it's a really great tool to have. It's a really great tool to have. It's very, it's very nice to have. Okay, let's see. Oh, we have time for another one. Let's see. Do we want to talk about, we can talk about the detailer or let's talk about both. I love the detailer, the do lolly. It is one of my favorite gadgets, I have to say. So, um, and you can use it in so many different ways. So the main use is as a fiber hider um, to hide your tails on, on the back of your stuff. Hers was the only tag to do that. That is so crazy. So it's great to slide um, your tails under your other stitches, whether it be from a waist knot like this one is, um, and you just simply slide it under your stitches. It has a twist at the very end of the, of the thing. It's not a needle threader by any means. It's too thick for that, especially the, the, the twist at the end of it. And then you'll just slide your thread through it. Um, and then you want to make sure that the, the fiber is caught at the end, not in the middle. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to pull it through. Um, so you want to make sure it's at the end. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Because of that twist, it wouldn't let you pull it through. 
Um, so this is its primary function, is that you can now slide those, those tails under without having to thread your needle. And it comes really in handy when the thread is too short to thread a needle. Um, you've got, you've got the, the detailer. Um, when your thread, you know, when you're stitching and you've, you've never seen the, the detailer, the star detailer, it's my favorite. So, you know, when you're stitching and your thread is just too short to, um, thread your needle, well, you can keep stitching with the detailer. So you can bring it up through your stitches and then thread it just like you normally would and then you know finish your stitch and you could do that you know until you kind of run out and then again you can now just um, slide it under your stitches as well so you can use it for both those functions whether you are you know finishing off a piece you know you know cutting off the waist knot or whatever whatever reason you need to slide it under um or if your thread is too short to actually thread the needle um, there's lots of different options when it comes to fiber hiders. So there's the star detailer, which is just the one. And then we have the fiber hiders, which have the hook and the, let's go back, go there, which have the hook and the detailer at the same time. So instead of like, you know, you, you can pull it with the hook, which is really, really nice. They even, I think, have a, a uh, eye hook so you can take them apart. There's a chain that holds them together, but I think there's like an eye hook or a clasp of some kind that you can take them apart. Um, so that's, I love the, I love the star detailer. It's one of my favorites. Um, okay. Let's talk about floss storage. Another one of my favorites. So I don't know if it came up in my newsfeed or how I saw it. But the other day, um, I saw on somewhere that somebody has these clear floss bobbins that she actually puts the sticker on in really bold, bold print. I was like, dude, I think for like five, for the whole DMC complex, com collection, it was like, I don't know, it was a lot. Like maybe I'll stick with these. Maybe I'll stick with these. So, um, so I was talking when I okay. So there's a bunch of different um options. There's floss bobbins, and there's either plastic or cardboard. Um, either one, whichever one you want to work with. I have small little project floss boxes like these, and then there's larger floss boxes. Um, but I like oh, and then there's that one too. Um, you never knew about the fiber hider. Oh, yay. See, it's good to revisit these old, um, old videos. This is my favorite box, this double sided. I'm not sure if it's back in stock. Let's go see if it's back in stock. It was out for a while. Oh, no, nope, it's not in stock yet. We're working on it. We're working on it. The, um, the supplier has been out because of the pandemic. Okay. Then the floss bags, these are great. They have a place where you can write the number and then you can put, you know, every, you don't have to rewind or anything, your floss that you've used. And then they'll have these little rings. So you can put all of your floss on the rings. Dude, this is a really fast video. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you can have them on these rings um, and have your entire collection there. I haven't heard of Annie's Keepers. Is she on? Um, I know I love the double sided, right? Is she on Etsy or Zoya, right? Zoya. I'm going to have to use your name for a character on my husband's game too. Cause that's a good name. <laughs> I'm just going to use all your guys' names for characters. Annie's, Annie's keepers. Okay. I'm going to look at it. And then there's stitch bows. These aren't as popular as, as some other, um, messes, but 
I played with it a bit and I did like it because it's super easy to get them right off the skein and onto the bow. And then you'll have a book of some kind and they'll just slide right into the slots. So that's really cool. I did really like that. And it's perfect for projects and stuff. These are um, just cards, fabric cards. These ones are cool. These are made out of wood. Those ones are really cool. Um, so that's just some of the options that we have. Um, they have them on www, uh, JDR dot b dot com okay <laughs> the stitch rolls are, are very convenient because you can put the number right off of the floss um right off of the floss skein right onto the bot the bow itself so it goes like right here on the tag um and so then you you automatically know so right there you can automatically see exactly what number it is and I've seen people that have big old binders full of them. So that's really cool. I will go and check out what Annie Keepers, Annie's Keepers are. Because that's, yeah, that's super cool. There are other things. There are um, these, uh, mm, what's it called? Mm, Panko something. Um, what's it called? I haven't used these. These are interesting. Oh, I've seen the little cabinet with drawers. Oh, so jealous. I love it. I love the little cab the little wooden one with drawers. I've seen it. I've never seen it in person. A friend cut all off the bottom of hanging file. Yes, I've seen those too. Yes, and you'll slide them into the, the hanging drawers. I've seen those too. That's so crazy. I thought we had, it's like this um, little like spongy thing that you can put numbers in. Okay, we must not, let's see. Unless it's somewhere else here. Let's go here. Um, organizers. False organizers. See, we've got like all kinds of new boxes and stuff. Oh, the big, the big, the big floss keys. These are about two and a half inches tall. And I use those mainly for like pearl cottons and stuff. That like size five pearl cottons that I don't, that I, that, you know, are on a skein. Um, and then I was able to go to my local Walmart and go into the fishing section, go to your local Walmart, go into the fishing section and you will find the most amazing floss boxes ever. They are like, so I was able to find a three inch deep floss box. Obviously it wasn't a floss box, but that's what I turned it into. That or Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, oh, they've got some of the best stuff. The best. I love all their little, we need to steal all the men's gadget stuff. Okay, I guess. Oh, here it is right here. This. Um, it's kind of got like a sponge thing in here. And this is perfect for if you're doing a specific project. Because then you can write out all of the symbols and the numbers um, on it. And then you have everything pre-threaded. Um, I really only use this for one project. It just didn't work for me. Having all those needle thread needles threaded. You know, it just didn't work for me. Um, this much of it. However, I've used a um, a needle dome. I love the needle dome, especially for smaller projects. Okay, here I'll show you the needle dome. I organized my thoughts last week in plastic photo boxes. Ooh, yes, I use plastic photo boxes too. Yes, that store in a plastic tote. I love it. I'll post photos of it. Yes, do do do. Yes, I love the photo boxes. This doesn't have anything in it. This one does. Okay, so it has 10 spaces in it. And um, you, so it can hold up to 10 threaded needles. Um, so each one is numbered. So what I did, I was doing a small project. Like, I think I had like eight colors. 
And I went through and I did, you know, one through eight right next to my symbol. So I knew which thread was where. And then you'll just simply um, slide your needle. I'm trying to do this behind and in front at the same time. Slide your needle into one of the holes, put it in this little groove here, and then wind it up. And then you have your lid. And your threads don't get mixed up. They don't get mixed up. And then you can just pull it out. It'll hold about, I don't know, how long is this? This is a long thread. This is about 36 inches right here. So it holds, you know, quite a bit of thread, but it's really, it's really nice. Where am I? Okay, there. So it's perfect. It's great for little projects because then you can just slide it all up. So I like that one better than the other one. Ammo boxes. Yes, I have all of my Krennic in ammo boxes. I had it over here and then I moved it. I probably moved it over there. So I have all my Krennic in ammo boxes. I bought the smaller ones. So they're only like this big, you know, so they don't hold that much. But yes, the needle dome. I love the needle dome. It's great. It's just so nice because it's got the lid and it's, you know, it's just so convenient. Um, so yeah, I love having my chronic in the, in the, in the ammo boxes. Oh, that's perfect. And I mean, we don't have a Michaels here anymore, but I would buy their photo boxes that are cute that you could get like three for $10. And I would store, you know, what, if I'm doing, if I'm using bags or, you know, however I'm storing it, I put it in those photo boxes because I love those photo boxes. They're great. I love the needle dome. It is here. I'll post the link to it. Where is it? Oh, we do have this box. This box here. It is specifically made for Krennic. Um, I don't recall how many each section can hold, but that's what we used to store our Krennic in in the store. So it's specifically made for storing Krennic. So let me go and find the needle dome and I will share the link because the needle dome is awesome. I should share the link for the um, do lolly too. Because they're both pretty cool. You know, it's so much fun. I should do a, a video on him because He's that cool. It'd be a fast video, but he's still cool. Um, okay, that was weird. I said there was an error of some kind. I don't know. Okay, there are both of those. Okay, so let's jump over now that I've rattled on for 40 minutes. And let's see what y'all have been up to this week. Besides having babies. Because <laughs> that's funny. Oh my goodness. Oh, look how cute. Oh my gosh, look at the cute little bee. Mm -hmm. You signed on just in time, Maria. Look at the cute little bees. Very cute. Oh my goodness. So it's this cute little cat thing. So I'm assuming like this is like here somewhere. Oh, very cute. I know the ammo box works so good for Krennix. I mean, you know, I don't want to trash a product, but I hated other boxes because they'd always fall over. But with the ammo box, each Krennix bobbin spool, spool is fit perfect into that ammo space and so it will never tip over i've got four six i've got six of them um to store my krennic and so i've got you know like a box for blending filaments and you know size four and then just numerical after that but ugh, i don't i saw it on facebook somewhere 
And then I went to, well, I had to ask a, far, a farmer, not a farmer, a hunter. Where do you buy, you know, gun stuff? And we have a store in town called The Sportsman. And so I went there and I got him. You posted a pic of your Annie's Keeper. Let's see. Let's refresh our page. See what we got. Oh my goodness. How cool is that? So it comes with a little stand and everything. Oh, I wish I could zoom. I'm going to have to go look them up. Because that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty that is. Almost ready to start the top part. Yay. That's beautiful. Oh, hashtag keep stitching. Yeah, I did 17 stitches. You know what? That is 17 more than you did yesterday. That's what I have to say. They're inexpensive. The Annie's Keepers are inexpensive. Oh, no. Yes. The ammo boxes. They are. I think, I mean, I really don't know. I don't remember. I, I really want to say $3.99 a box. They were not that expensive. They were really, they were under five bucks each. I know that for sure. So head to your local hunter place. That's what you need. You need to find a hunter. And then they'll tell you where to go. That's where my son took me to get my ammo boxes. Oh, to the Sportsman Warehouse? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that's where you got to go. I was asking my um, son-in-law, who's a big hunter. And I was like, where? Like, we don't have, like, a gun store in Cash Valley. It's not like, you know, like you see in the movies where people can go to like a gun store. We don't have that. So I'm like, where do you go to buy a gun? You know, <laughs> where, where do you go to buy a gun? And yeah, ours, you have to go to like hunting places to buy a gun. If you have Rural King, they have the ammo boxes. Or an army surplus. Oh, army surplus. I never thought of an army surplus. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay, that's, yes. 17 stitches more than you did yesterday. Oh, look at all those beads. Oh, and it's finished. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh my goodness, just look at all those beads. Look at the little antlers. Oh my God, do you love it? Do you love it, love it, love it? Oh, it's so pretty. Did you love beading? Because I love it. And it just, it makes me happy. It's so pretty. There are places online for ammo boxes. Yeah, I guess you could just Google. I bet even Amazon sells them. Yeah, I bet even Amazon would sell the ammo boxes. And they wouldn't be. Mine, like I say, mine are small. They only hold probably 20, I want to say. So I bet you could get bigger ones that would hold more. 2,000 beads. Oh my goodness. I love it. It makes my heart happy. It makes me very happy. I'm very proud of you. Good job. Good job. The cute little bee having a baby. Oh, look how cute. And he's a finish. Here comes Peter Cottontail. So cute. So cute. Um, okay. So I think you should get a mat. Yes. I kind of think you should get like a double mat and have the mat that is closest to the fabric be the, a blue, one of the blues, and then have the other mat be, I don't know, something else, not blue, not white, but something else. 
And then I'm kind of leaning towards maybe a gold frame because that would bring out the gold in the beads. Um, now what that top mat should be, I don't know. I can't, like I can picture everything else, but I can't picture that top mat of what color it should be. But the bottom mat should be a blue. And I want to say the darker blue. I don't think the top mat should be a lighter blue. Like I want to say the top mat should be a white, like an opaque white or a um, suede white. And then the frame should be gold. Gray, gray could work. Yes, I do like gray. Mine came from Amazon and I think they were two for five bucks. Oh, see, hey, there you go. Amazon, if you can't, if you don't know where to find stuff, Amazon. <laughs> That's my input and the frame. Because I think a gold frame would accent those gold pieces really, really well. <gasps> Two finishes. Yay, come sit, come stitch for a spell. That's cute. That's cute. And to all a good night. Very cute. Wait, does that say 2015? <laughs> That's funny. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. This is adorable. This is adorable. I'm loving it. Oh my gosh. Look how far you're coming. Oh, so cute. So cute. Oh, look at all the cute little Easter ornaments. I just finished or I just bought, um, my grandbaby's Easter stuff. Um, so I haven't got like the eggs or the candy yet. I just got a couple presents for them. So it'll be cute. I'm excited for it. Those are adorable. I love your whole little setting. That's so cute. <gasps> oh, look at her. Oh, she's coming along so nice. Oh, so nice. Seek out what magnifies your spirit i love that dragonfly world art from extra tree shop on etsy oh, that is beautiful i love that you've already eaten all the candy <laughs> i only got a small bag of candy just a small bag um so i can put it in their eggs and they can take it home with them and yeah, because if I get a big bag, it'll stay here and I'll eat it all. Back to beating after being away for a week. Well, he's coming along very nicely. I love his beard. Little Santa man's beard. Oh, so cute. I love it. Oh. Hospital stitching, waiting on a baby, and it's taking its sweet time. Oh, hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And those babies can take a while. So why not stitch? And, you know, they say that when you see a cardinal, it's a message from heaven. Um, I actually just saw that just the other day. I want to say yesterday that I was watching. A TikTok video, and this chick said that when you see a cardinal, it's a message from a loved one in heaven. I was like, "That's cool. I need to look outside more often." <laughs> oh my goodness! How cute is this one? <gasps> look at the little checkered bunny. Colored pom poms just so on his butt. How cute is that? So she's made two of them, a pink one and a red one. Oh, the first one was purple. I sell what? Candy? What do I sell? Oh my gosh, these are so cute. I don't know what I sell. Needle domes? Yes. Do lollies? Yes. Ammo boxes? 
No, unfortunately, no. Oh, look how cute. And it's a finish. I am humbled by the beauty of a flower in the breeze, surrounded by an orchestra of softly buzzing bees. Oh, I love it. Look at all the cute little bees. So cute. And look at the fabric. I mean, it's like a very soft, soft hand dyed. Very nice. Is this a finish too? It is a finish. Hi, oh, yeah. I need the every hour. Aw, very cute. Very nice. How often do you change your stitching needle? I will usually, um, depending on the project, but theoretically for myself, I will change it every project. Now I do tend to lose things specifically when I pin it in my shirt, which I do often and I don't know why. And then it goes missing. So then I have to get a new needle. Um, there are other uh, people who will rust their needles. And so their needles will last anywhere from a week to 10 days before the, the, the outside shell of it is rusted off. Um, there are gold needles out there that don't rust as, as often, but they will. Um, it's the alkaline in their fingers will rust. Um, so it truly depends on how you feel that needle is working. Um, now with cross stitch, you know, you're lucky because it's a, a, a tapestry needle. So it's blunt. So it's not like you need to have a sharp needle. Now, if you're doing embroidery where you do need a sharp needle, obviously you're going to, you're going to change it more often because the more you use it, the duller it'll get. So depending on how big the embroidery project is, you might change that an embroidery needle more often than you would a tapestry needle. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. I would say you start with a fresh needle for every project. Um, and then, you know, go until you lose it or until you're like, mm, I think I need a new needle. You know, my needles get lost in the arm of my recliner. It's a true story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or in pillows. We've, we've lost needles in pillows before. Uh, the floor, of course, and then you find them with your feet. That's a real good one. I've done that. Um, I don't know why, but I will tend to put them in my shirt. That's what needle minders are for. You put the needle minder, you put the needle minder on your project, then you put the needle on your project, on the needle minder, and then you don't lose them. You polish needles. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I had one girl that she, or the alkaline, she would rust them. Um, and then, yeah, there are others that can polish them. Do you sell needle sharpeners? I do not. I probably should. Okay, I'll look into it. I've never thought of it because... I've never thought of it. I've been using the same needle for years. They seem fine to me. Is that bad? No, it's not bad at all. If you like the needle you're using and the eye isn't broke and the needle, I mean, you know, if the needle works for you, there's no reason that you need a new needle. I mean, when I say every project, I mean, do I have another one? Oh, right. I mean, I have my little needle case, whether it be something like this whether it be something like this or whether it be something like this and whatever's in here, I get a needle out. Now, how old these needles are, these are brand new because I haven't used them. But in something like this, where I have 101 needles, I don't know how old these are. Yes, I do. These are probably five or six years old needles in here. So, as long as the needle works for you, there's really no right or wrong. Unless, here's the rules. Unless you're doing basic embroidery and then and the sharp needle is blunt. 
unless you're polishing the needle and it's wearing thin and you it could break unless the eye is broken and the thread isn't holding anymore or if you are warping the needle somehow or your acetone is corroding the needle those are the only reasons to change it that i think you have just one needle too i've had eyes break on the same needle yeah i've had eyes break too that's that's the most point of weakness in a needle would be the eye and so that that would wear out first if you i mean i don't have an alkaline problem so for me my eyes will break faster than i will corrode a needle so that's it specific especially if you find a brand and type and size that you love why not keep using the same needle so that's my two cents and that is very very cute oh it is a finish mrs mrs hen with cute chicks by stitchery princess on etsy so cute oh my goodness oh i love that that is so pretty stitching book club by sapphire mountain handicrafts handcrafts handcrafts <gasps> that is so pretty i love it <gasps> i've seen this one oh it's so pretty oh my god i gotta keep saying i gotta quit saying that oh i love it i love it love it love it oh love it my kid would freak if i did that for him i probably won't no i love peacemaker needles those are my favorite i first got peacemaker 25 some odd years ago, um, only by hand was like, here, I'm going to give you this needle so you can, uh, check it out. And like the next day I went and bought like four or five packs. Cause I was like, I don't know what it is, but these are my needle from now on. I love peacemaker. Those are definitely my preferred needle. 28 is my preferred size. I wish it was a little bit longer, but I'm okay with it. Cause I like it. I curl gold needles. It's true. And use non gold needles until the eye breaks. It's true. I did just see, I haven't figured out a source yet, but I just saw there are these gloves. They're two fingered gloves. And so it goes over these two fingers and then covers your hand. So then you're using the glove and you won't corrode the needle. Um, I don't know. I don't think it would work for me because, I mean, I feel like. I need to fill my needle and I feel if I had gloves on, I wouldn't fill my needle. So I'd rather go through needles than not have my grip on my needle. Um, peacemakers are the best. When the eye breaks, I use eye drops or glasses. <laughs> 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 well, that's <was> funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is very cute. I love this. I love that. That's very cute. Oh, look at that. Oh, I think this is a finish. Is this a finish? No, it's not a finish because she's got a border still. Two Americana ones right in a row. How cute is that? Oh, oh, how cute. Wait, is this stitching or is that like a logo? Oh, I don't know. It's in a different language. That might be a logo, I think. Let's see. Oh, it's, wait. My mom gifts in progress. If this is the stitching, that's cute. I've never broken an eye. Oh, really? Wow. Oh yeah, best my field implement my carrot ammo boxes. That's a good place. Yeah. Oh, look at Karen stitching. That looks like somebody's face. 
you know, like the nose, the eye, weird mouth, her hair, you know. So this is a chick that is on YouTube. And so she sent me um, these two pictures today. Look how cute. How cute is that? And then she's doing the baby Yoda for uh, sister, friend. Ooh, I don't recall. But how cute is that? I guess I started something with needles. <laughs> well, I'm glad we were able to help. I'm glad we were able to answer your question. Oh, that's cute. I don't know if that's finished or not. Obviously, that's a logo. Oh, my goodness. Is it finished? I don't know. Is it finished? Oh, yes, it's finished. 37 years in the making. Ah, ah. Oh, my God. That is so awesome. Yay. <laughs> that is so awesome. I love that. 37 years. 37 years and she finished it. That makes my heart happy. Oh, how cute is that one? How cute is that one? I think the oldest one I've ever seen. The first year we had the merit program, I had somebody that did a 20-year-old one. I don't think I've ever seen one 37 years. I think that's got to be my new record. I don't think I've seen one that old before. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty dang awesome. All because of the Love to Stitch Challenge. Not really. It's all because she stitched. But I feel like we should take some Love to Stitch credit on it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Look, another baby Yoda. How cute is that? Cute little baby Yoda. Oh, I think we're going into doubles now. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, that's good because it's time to get off. So, okay. So love to stitch emails went out. If you didn't get one, um, DM me and I can double check your email address and resend it. Um, so you can all go in there, click that you feel like it, as long as you stitch 24 out of the 28 days, once you do that, I'll go back through and I will double check your accountability posts. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to give it like two and a half weeks and then we will um, order the needle minders in. If you didn't see, that is what it's going to look like. I think it's pretty, pretty cute. I like it. Okay, so keep stitching. Keep stitching. Keep stitching, stitching, using hashtag, keep stitching. And I hope you all have a fabulous, fabulous week. Happy stitching and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.